So this video is all about Imbolc, which is the first festival of spring and I thought where better to come and do this video than Ireland since I'm here a lot anyway. Um, so I'm in Ireland right now and I'm actually in quite a, an unusual place I would say. So if there's some echo in, there's some wind um, and that kind of thing, that's why I'll show you this in just a second. Um, but I just wanted to give a bit of background on Imbolc. So it is a festival that it was attested in ancient Irish literature and there's a bit of debate over where the word comes from, what does it mean. Some people say that it means in the belly and it's about the breeding season of the animals because this would be a really important thing to have in the calendar and kind of celebrate um, all throughout history. Um, some people say that it is about ewes milk, sheep's milk, when the sheep would start producing milk for the first time in the year. So these kind of things. But for the Celtic um, Irish people, agriculture is really important. So we're looking at the harvest festivals, the start of spring, these kind of things. So that's kind of where it comes from. Um, and like with everything in pagan history, it's really hard to find evidence and information on why um, things were the way they are and what people did. What we have to kind of do is look at what sources we do have but then look at Christian tradition as well because um, Ireland obviously was heavily heavily Christianized and that is where we are today. So I wanted to share a few things about um, Imbolc, things that you can do to celebrate and then things about Ireland as well. So the room I am in right now is it's kind of like a giant greenhouse, but it's not warm at all because there's been a crazy storm here for the last week. Um, and I'm at the Agula Shrine Well. Um, and wells are a really significant thing in Irish history, pagan history. And there's about 3,000 wells in Ireland. And we know that in the pagan tradition, pre-Christian, they were a really, really important site. We don't have tons of information about what people were doing there, but we do have certain writings about wells being kind of like poles to the other world um, and then obviously just the, the life-given essence of a well is really incredible and there were a lot of women who were the keepers of the wells um, a lot of really interesting history and um, obviously when things got christianized it became a, a christian shrine a lot of the wells so when you go around the wells in ireland some of them are just random little ditches and farmers fields um, and some of them are really well kept shrines that people come and visit and put things down and pr prayers and that kind of thing so the reason I'm here is kind of twofold. One is to do with the fact that a really nice thing to do for Imbolc at this time of the year is go and visit a source of water, whether it's a well, a stream, a river, anything like that. And another is to do with the goddess Bridget. And Bridget is a ancient Irish goddess um, and she's really associated with this time of year. Um, she's associated with poetry, wisdom, springtime, uh, healing, sacred waters and all these kind of things. So there are specific Bridget wells around Ireland. Most of them are Saint Bridget, um, who is the Christianized version of the, the ancient goddess. Um, but it's still a nice thing to do is come and kind of just be with a source of water and appreciate it, maybe leave an offering if that's the kind of thing you like to do, just to kind of commemorate that and bring that in. So I'm gonna show you where we are right now. So I am in this big greenhousey type thing. Um, it is the Agula Shrine, so obviously it has been Christianized. I think people still do some kind of mass here because there's this. And there's also, I'm not trying to be offensive, I think this is offensive actually. Um, there is some very unusual Christian items. This is just an aside to the video. But I don't understand why you would want this weird winking hologram of Jesus on the cross but whatever that's nothing to do with the video um, but this is the shrine in here and I've actually just spotted that there is a Bridget's cross up there as well I'm not sure if you can fully see because um, the, the shadow's going onto it but I'll talk more about Bridget's cross in just a little bit out here we've got the the shrine and the well and my poor mother who I kicked out <laughs> to do this video um, but I'll take you out there in just a sec I'm just in here because it's so windy at the minute um, so I wanted to get the audio a little bit better but this is where we are just to um, think about the, the importance of water and holy wells and the goddess Bridget and just to remember that part of Ireland
One of the nice things to do at this time of the year as well is just come and look for signs of spring um, but I'll be honest we're struggling to find any <laughs> signs of spring. I have seen somewhere there are like daffodils coming up and crocuses and snowdrops and stuff I would expect to see some snowdrops but I'm going around trying desperately to find some signs of the spring for you and I can't really apart from the willow um, has got these little buds on it so that's a sign of spring um, but I thought I'll just be honest because sometimes that's how it is ah. that's what mine are like okay there's a crocus in there somewhere come free oh yeah it's just starting to show itself the comfrey's coming back up there this whole patch uh, my mum made to just be all comfrey and um, so she can use it for fertilizer so that's coming up down there a little bit yeah all the garlic here onions yeah you found a daffodil <laughs> and there as well <laughs> 